Valentine. What kept you? Yeah, right. I know you civil servants and clock watches, but I can't beat a 30 knot headwind. Is that it? That looks so disappointing. I thought this one was high security. It is. If this falls into the wrong hands... It could be the end of civilization as we know it, yeah. Maybe. People are always so melodramatic. Sunshine. What do they want us to do? I think they want us to land. We can't. Lose them. They're trying to force us down. They don't want to destroy it. Well, they mustn't get their hands on it. Hang on to your hat, Mr. Valentine. Get paid. When we get our hands on the goods. Watch out for the downwards. Listen, aim for the rear rotor. Can't hit it. Hey, allow me. They say video games aren't any good for you.
What exactly does it do, Mr. Dent? It's a vital new piece of equipment for the nation's defense, Peggy. And we're lucky to have it here in one piece. From what I heard, luck had nothing to do with it. It was all down some chopper pilot. What worries me is how they knew about this at all. More, haven't your security people come up with anything? Nothing so far. Ballantyne's gone to take a look at the crash chopper, but um, I doubt it'll tell us anything. Maybe not, but keep me informed. Now, let's get on with this, eh? You better try one of the news channels, though. We don't want to mess with anything serious. A setback in the efforts to bring peace to a troubled area. On the scene, our reporter Bob Gaydon reports now live by satellite. Bob, you've been in the capital since the ill-fated elections two days ago. Just how bad is this latest setback for the peace process? Well, Dick, as government talks with the rebels have broken down completely, heavy shelling from the surrounding... Uh, we seem to have temporarily <laughs> lost Bob. We'll re-establish that satellite link. And if we let you. In just a moment when we've lost that little gremlin. A gremlin called Sacros. She jams satellites, calls them up, and won't let go. Sacros? Why Sacros? It sounds like some Greek island. A satellite and communication remote override system. We can stick to Sacros. <laughs> that seems to work okay. Nice machine. Powerful weapon. We rely so much on satellite communications. Absolutely. Anything and everything that goes via satellite becomes vulnerable. At the flick of a switch, you could disable a country's telephones, defences, financial transactions. You could bring half the world to a halt. Beckett. Hello? Hello? Who's there? Beckett, it's me. Valentine. The woman involved in the attack on the chopper. I found her car. I put a tracker on it. I think we should meet. Away from the hive. Away from here? Why? I think it was an inside job. Someone in the hive set it up. Excuse me, will you be long? I'm sorry, I'll just be a couple of seconds. Ugh. Valentine? Valentine. Valentine's been shot, sir. That's a gun with a silencer, I'm sure of it. <laughs> Beckett, it's been over ten years since a hive operative has been shot in action. So? Well, I'm sure Valentine is perfectly all right. And if you're that worried, I'll have a word with Dent about it, OK? Oh, I'll have that tape filed. Thank you, Becky. So what is it you want? Why the sudden meeting here? We've decided we must take Sacros out of the hive itself. We need you to supply us with the access codes. Take it from the hive? That's crazy. It's impossible. Easier than you think. Anyway, all you need worry about is getting us the codes. Look. You need money, don't you? Well, do as we ask. Then you take the pen out of your pocket, point it at the target, and turn on the transmitter. If you want to record, you press the record button on the machine. Excuse me a moment. Hello, Gizmos. Who's that? Roz, who's that? Look, um, 
I need something enhancing, and it's, uh, well, rather sensitive. <laughs> Sounds intriguing. I want the guy I dealt with before, uh, Terry. Well, Terry's gone. I'm the guy now. Uh, forget it. I'll... Come on. You want something doing? I can do it. No questions asked. What's the originating format? Mini disc, digital cassette, that. That. Oh, no problem then. I can get that on audio file, pull up the signal so clear you could hear a pin drop and know where to find it. Sorry. What was that? What you were? Right. I'll be there, Nick Beckett. Yep. I'll see you then. My name's Roz. Roz Henderson. Records room. Mechanical fault, sir? I'll check it out. When? Uh, five minutes in the conference room. Oh, and Beckett, I, I need Ballantyne's file. It's on my desk. Could you pop into my office and bring it down to me? Sure. I'll see you in a minute. Mr. Beckett. I'm just getting a file for Mr. Dent. Of course you are, sir. He called me on an internal line. Mr. Dent is out for the rest of the day. I just spoke to his secretary. That's impossible. He just asked me to bring him a file. I'm sure there's some easy explanation. Log it in the instrument book and we'll say no more. Regulation state. I know the rule book, Alan. Okay, just search, Mr. Beckett. Satisfy yourself there's nothing in this. There's really no need for this, you know. Is there a problem, Nick? Smart place for a man on your salary. Oh, paid for with uh, stolen tapes, of course. It's no joke, Beckett. Am I laughing? Check in there. You should have signed the tape out. You know the procedure. The classroom. Mr. Beckett? What? Uh, we 
it safe to drive on my early. Well, you're just in time to drive. As soon as I find out, you'll be the first to know. Are you from the Hive, too? Yeah, then. How did you know that? Checked you out. So what's the score here, then? You've not been paying your tea money. Do I look dishonest? Right. What are you doing? Watch out! Chicken! Persistent, aren't they? Yeah, I blame performance-related pain myself. So they think you're a wrong one, do they? If someone's working very hard to make it look that way. Well, it wouldn't exactly be our character, though, would it? Christmas of a US base, 1987. Unauthorized leave, 1989. Court martialed for failing to obey orders, 1991. That's classified. Never misspent youth, Mr. Beckett. Oh, really? Misspent youth? Me? What about you? Let me. Illegal wiretaps, bugging, Never touches them. phone freaking. You hooked the Foreign Secretary's private line up to a knocking shop in Tokyo. Deserted. That was a nice little job, wasn't it? Where did you find that out, anyway? The same way you did, probably our files. Only I'm authorised. going to pay me, the price just went up. So what's on this tape that's so important? Well, that's what I was hoping you'd find out. That was very impressive, you know. The way you lost control. <sighs> More coffee? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Cultural's a perfectionist, though. Just give up. Gotcha. Hey! You know this guy? He lives on the top floor. No! Beckett, he's my neighbor. Now put him down. I'm sorry, all right? I thought you were someone else. Obviously. Nick Beckett. Ed. You make a habit of this, do you? Climbing up other people's balconies. As a matter of fact, I was just trying to make my way home. The interesting way. He's always doing this. When I bought the flat, no one told me the block had a resident Spider-Man. <laughs> Ed, you would not believe the day we have had. Beckett works for, actually, I should say, he used to work for this place called The Hive. Now, we were the supposed Hive. to... The Hive? I did a job for them yesterday. You're joking. I got shot at for my troubles. Wait a minute. You were Valentine's pilot, right? Collecting Sacros. Valentine? Yeah, that was the guy's name. Is he a friend of yours? He was. He's dead. At least I think he's dead. I heard this shot. At least I... I thought I heard this shot on this tape. The trouble is, the tape's back at the hive. Right, so I'm that's not... the sound on the tape that you want me to enhance. That's right. Uh, maybe I'm... maybe I'm concussed. Why don't you just go back and get the tape? Because I'm a wanted man, and the hive has got a security system that makes Fort Knox look like a playpen. Sounds interesting. Meaning? Meaning? I like a challenge. This Ballantine. You seem like an okay kind of guy. And if something's happened, I'd... I'd like to help if I can. <laughs> and how exactly could you help? <laughs> Don't ask. Fingers crossed, Ed. 
The helmet camera is working well. You're mad, you know that. Nah, I just get bored if I don't risk my life at least once a day. Twice on Sundays. Now this tape, it's on the top floor, yeah? Yeah. Oh well, it could be worse. All right, I'm down. You're on the right side there. There's a window in the tower below you. What, down here? Yes. All right, I'm going over. That's the window there. It's a bit small, isn't it? They're the only ones that open. There's a short corridor just inside. Ed, don't break the contact on the window. Use the bypass I gave you and make sure the contacts are clean. in that corridor, Ed. If the night shifter is hot as the day lock, you've got about 30 seconds. Time, Ed. Get out. It's got to be here somewhere. Ed, get out. Intruder on top floor. Should have guessed. But if you thought of that in the first place, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble. No doubt in my mind, that's a shot into a body. Sorry, Pickett. What's the sound just, um, 
just before that, in, in the background, there's a noise. Let's see what I can do. It's a woman talking. She's probably the killer. There's another sound in the background. It sounds mechanical, Nick. I really... Why do you want to know? Because it might be a clue as to where Ballantyne was shot, which could lead us to the killer. How? Ballantyne, he, he'd followed his suspect, right? And he bugged her car. But the range of that sort of bug is strictly limited. Exactly. So if we can find out where Ballantyne was shot, then we might be able to pick up the frequency. Come on, look. This is, this is all I've got. Let's see if I can get the background any clearer. This train stops next with the side Thank you. Guys, I think I've got something. Valentine's bug? Yeah. Is it the frequency he was using? It looks like it. Which direction? North. Right, let's get in the car. Come on. The woman's car. Bros, what are you doing? I'm into the phone company's records, trying to find out who lives here. Well, the house is alarmed, and in the name of Elena Johnson. You need anything to anybody? Let's go and take a look around. Well, hang on a sec. We know she did it. Why play spy games on her? Look, Ed, someone at the hive has framed me, and I've got to find out who, OK? Down. Uh, Ed, you follow her. Me and Rosie go and look inside. Now, this is for you. What is it? It's a tracer, so I can find you. Ros, I'm not going to get lost. I am out of short trousers now, you know. OK, fine. What are you thinking of you? Tracer. In case I get lost. In the national interest. Of course. I'll take upstairs. This is tomorrow's. Look, I program them. No one else knows the codes. Now, have you got something for me? Your payment. Yes. It's being arranged, don't worry. In the meantime, a little something extra as a thank you for being patient. Uh, open it later. Now, let's enjoy our meal, eh? I won't be a moment.
Thanks. What are you doing? I'm updating that old photo we found at Elena's house. Computer aging. Oh, yeah. The Americans invented this, didn't they? To find missing kids. We've got this on the main frame at the hive. Hang on a minute. This is the one on the main frame of the hive. You're catching on. Hey, can you age him up? He looks kind of familiar. That's what I was about to do. How long does it take? A couple of minutes. Excuse me. Hello. Beckett? Mr. Dent? You've been rather a naughty boy, haven't you, Beckett? And I must warn you. Beware, Beware of, of women, women who drive, drive too fast. fast. Over bridges. Sorry, Beckett, couldn't resist. I've been trying to think how they set you up. I figured it had to be something like that. Someone's just sampled him, then used a voice synthesizer. So, how did you get a sample of Den's voice? <sighs> Easy, compared to getting into the Hive's ageing system. So that's how Mr. Dent made an internal call when he wasn't in the building, right? But if he didn't make the call, who did? Him? Hang on a minute. Beckett! Recognize him. Recognize him? I work for him. That's Cottrell, my boss. I don't get it. If Cottrell is the link, then what the hell is he playing at? Well, no idea. But I'm not going to be able to clear my name until we figure it out. Start the car. I get lost. You're all right. Yeah. More than could be said for my car. <laughs> Thank God. Where's Beckett? I don't know. Cottrell took him somewhere. All right. Let's find Cottrell and hope he leads us to Beckett. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Stand by, Ross. Rolling. Hello, ladies. Good morning, sir. Uh, buy a poppy. It's uh, it's only once a year. Thank you. Let's put him in there for you. Come on, sir. Thank you. Decent of you. Ah, thank you, ladies. It's OK as long as he doesn't take his jacket off. Cyclops, we're doing some more tests. Well, Mr. Dent told me there was restricted access to it. Oh, yes, of course. No, well, I can't let you take it without authorization of Mr. Dent. Oh. Hmm. Will this do? He's killed him. To get Sacros. What chance has Beckett got now? Looks like they're planning to leave the country. You better get over to Elena Johnson's. Keep an eye on her. So you steal Sacros. What then? Set up the biggest protection racket in the world. Let's just say that the satellites are about to become redundant. Unless we say so, of course. How much are you paying Cottrell? Pay him. We are partners and have been for a very long time. With the help of Sacros, we are going to become very rich. Then we can... What's happened? There's something strange. Damn. They're on to us, Ed. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm listening outside Elena's now. They could have heard every word. Then I'll kill him. No. Rose, listen, Beckett's here. I'm going in. Time's up, Beckett.
Cottrell's left the hive. He had some plane tickets. I'm pretty certain he's heading for the airport now. Ross is on a Cottrell. He's headed for the airport. Are you tailing him? No, I'm going to pick you up. I think I know of a way to make them change their plans. Hello. It's me. Hello, darling. You disposed of Beckett? He's dead. Wonderful. I don't think we should risk the airport. They'll be looking for us. Now listen. I've got an idea. Well, you bought that all right. Let's see what she makes of your performance. We need a change of plan. We'll never get through immigration. Oh, God. You mean you won't? They haven't got my name on their computers. It's all right. I've got it all worked out. I know a man with a helicopter. He can take us to Paris. We'll pick up a flight there. I've not had good experience with the helicopters. It will be OK this time. All right. Where do we meet him? OK, we're in a go condition, just lifting off. Do you copy? What are you on about, Ed? Well, is that the sort of thing you say in these situations? I never do, no. No, how come you've only just got airborne? Hey, listen, you can't park a helicopter just anywhere, you know. Good idea to order a helicopter. I didn't order the helicopter. You phoned me, told me to meet you here. You phoned me? You idiot! They've duped us! Let's get out. OK, Roz, look out. It looks like they know we're onto them. Don't worry. Don't get far. Don't ram them. You'll damage Sacros. Thanks to let you drive. Oh, my poor clutch. I mean, don't worry about the paintwork. We really can't go on meeting like this, you know? At least we don't get carsick. Yeah, let's hope Sackross doesn't eat them. Yep, you sure to go through all this. And only pick up bits and pieces fit for the recycling skip. They're getting away. No, they're not. It only looks like it. Um, very much in second place. Roger, Wilco, estimated time of arrivals about uh, oh, pretty soon. Just get here, Ed. All right, all right, I'm almost there. Ten years' work went into Sacros. Now look at it. Well, I guess that's your chances of getting your job back gone up in smoke. Yeah. I better get me old interview suit out, I think. Not necessarily. I've got a proposition to put to you. You too, Ed.
What's that? It's a. Uh... <clears throat> it's for you. No. You got me in present. Sort of. More a case of lost property, really. My lovely car. Yeah, we, uh, we don't know what it was before, but um, now it's a compact. <laughs> yeah, Ross, I mean, um, you know, it's probably better off this way, the way you drive. I suppose there is one good thing. We are doddled apart. <laughs> <laughs>